Hello everyone. So today we are going to see the concept of F distribution. So we will see the concept and we will see some examples. Now before telling you the definition, what we have studied before F distribution. So we have seen Z test or Z distribution. Then we have seen T test and we have seen chi square test or chi square distribution. So when we studied sampling distribution, there when we take the sample, we have seen the concept of statistics. And in statistic, the important statistics that we usually play with or that we usually use is sample mean and the sample variance. Sample proportion is also used, but let's keep it aside for a while. Sample mean and sample variance are much of the importance to us. So when we played with sample mean, we have a very nice theorem which is called as the central limit theorem, which says that x bar, the sample mean x bar is normally distributed. And there we can use either Z test or T test. If you know the population standard deviation, we use Z test. If you do not know the population standard deviation, then we replace our sigma by small s, the sample standard deviation, and we use the T test. That's what we have seen in our earlier lecture. So, okay, so sample mean is done. Next comes the sample variance. So for sample variance, which we denote by S square, we do not have any such nice theorem for sample variance like we have for sample mean, central limit theorem. We do not have any nice theorem for s square but what we observed was if you multiply by n minus 1 and divide by sigma square then this random variable follows chi square distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom so when we play with single sample the variance when you multiply by n minus 1 divided by sigma square it follows chi square distribution so that time we use chi square so we know when to use z t and chi square question is when to use f well when you are having two sample and you are playing with the variance, that time we use F distribution. Okay, so if you want to compare the variance or when you talk about the ratio of variances, then you play with the F distribution or the F test. Okay, so what will be the definition? What the definition will involve? Now, as I said, when you are playing with the ratio of variance, that time F comes into the picture. When we talk about the sample variance, which distribution we think of, we think of chi-square. So it's very natural thing to think that, okay, when I talk about the ratio of variances, chi-square will definitely come into the picture. And that's what the actual definition you see when you see any book. So what does the F distribution is? If you're having two independent chi-square random variables, okay, so you and we are independent and they are chi-square random variables and with M and N degrees of freedom. So U is with M degrees of freedom, V is with N degrees of freedom. Then what is my F distribution or the F test or the F variable? It is the ratio of these two independent chi-square random variables divided each by its degree of freedom. So U upon its degree of freedom divided by V upon its degree of freedom. This is called as an F distribution or an F variable. Okay, so this depends on two degrees of freedom. Like here we have only one degrees of freedom which is N minus one. Here it depends on two degrees of freedom. Okay, so some people also write it as f m comma n numerator degree of freedom and the denominator degree of freedom there is one more way of writing f or some people also write in the suffix m comma n m is for the numerator and n is for the denominator so these are the notations you may see so now whenever we talk about a random variable what is the next immediate thing we talk about we talk about is the probability density function because if i want to find the probability that f will take the value between some particular value to some particular value. How do you find the probability? By simply integrating the probability density function. So question is, what is the probability density function for F distribution? Well, it is some constant. Now this constant involves gamma function and M and N, the degrees of freedom. But anyways, I'm not going to write it. Those who are interested, they can see the book. Why I'm not writing? Because same like T distribution and the chi-square distribution or the Z distribution, the PDFs are very complicated. So when we want to find the probabilities, we never actually integrate the probability density function because it's time consuming, it's very long. And we use the tables to find the probabilities. Similarly for F also, the PDF is very quite complicated. So to find the probabilities for the F values, instead of integrating the probability density functions, we will take the help of the tables. And that's the only reason I'm not writing it completely over here. So H of X, I'm not writing F, f of x because f we are already using as a f variable so h of x is c into x raised to numerator degree of freedom by 2 minus 1 divided by this thing okay so this is how for x greater than 0 and for x less than 0 we keep it 0 okay and uh, 
Yeah, so this is how the probability density function is defined for f uh, distribution. No need to learn this because as I said, we are going to use the table to solve the problems involving f distribution. Okay, now this is about the density function. Question is how does it look graphically? Now as it is the ratio of 2 chi square, therefore it is a non-negative random variable because our chi square is always positive. So ratio of chi square is always positive. So f is always positive, non-negative. Okay, so same like chi square, this will also be skewed towards the right okay and as the degrees of freedom will keep on increasing as the degrees of freedom will keep on increasing the f distribution will approximately normal it will approach towards the normal distribution okay so higher the degrees of freedom the more nicer nicer the graph you get but for smaller degrees of freedom it is skewed towards the right so that is how the graph for f looks like and uh, one more thing the notation that we are going to use is is the same for f and t, uh, t and chi square which we use so if this is suppose the graph f alpha of v1 v2 or m comma n okay this is people v1 v2 or m comma n the numerator degree of freedom and the denominator degree of freedom what is f alpha it is a f value so these are my f values Alpha means the area towards the right is how much? Area towards the right is alpha. So f alpha is a f value such that area towards the right is alpha. So this is a notation that we are going to use very widely. And uh, question is how to use the table? So well, if you will see the table, I will show you in a moment. So if you see the table, here you will have degrees of freedom, the numerator degree of freedom, and here you will have the denominator's degree of freedom. One, two, three, four, five, six, so on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so on. Okay. Now, if you see the Walpole book or any other book, usually you will see uh, four pages for F distribution. Two pages are for alpha is equal to 0 0.05 and two pages for alpha is equal to 0 0.01. Actually, when you study uh, test of hypothesis and estimation theory there we will see we are interested in 95 percent confidence interval or the 99 percent confidence interval so that's why because of that 95 percent and 99 percent the table values are only given for 0 0.05 and 0 0.01 that's the actual reason but anyways that we will see when we will see, study more about estimation and the test of hypothesis so if you see at the back you will have four pages two for this f values two for this f values okay so at the at the top itself i think it is written f 0 0.05 so whatever this f values are here whatever this f values are here for this degrees of freedom the area towards the right is 0 0.05 and for remaining two pages area towards the right is 0 0.01 so only for these two alphas the f distribution table is given to you okay that's one thing now another thing is uh, one of the very nice relation between that f variable satisfies and that relation is if you take f alpha of v1 v2 then that is equal to reciprocal of f1 minus alpha v2 v1 okay or some people also write f1 minus alpha of v1 v2 is 1 upon f alpha v2 v1 so when you take the reciprocal the degrees of freedom get reverse and you get 1 minus alpha okay so this is one of the very nice theorem that uh, you can use while solving the problems involving f distribution okay okay now let me tell you one last point and then we'll go for some examples and we will again revisit this f test when we will when we play, when we will go into the world of estimation theory and the test of hypothesis now what is the main theorem i am saying the theorem i want to talk about is the ratio of variances now if you have two populations so for from population one and from population two you will have sample variance s1 square is the var sample variance for the first population s2 square is the sample variance for the second population suppose of size n1 and size n2 okay now we know that if i multiply this by n1 minus 1 divided by sigma 1 square and this by n2 minus 1 divided by sigma 2 square then they both follow chi square distribution so if i take the ratio of this divided by its respective degrees of freedom so if i take the ratio of both the chi square distribution divided by its respective degree of freedom then we know that this 
random variable follows f distribution okay and i am calling this since this is one variable and second variable this is my f variable now what you can see this gets cancelled and this gets cancelled so ultimately this is nothing but sigma 2 square s1 square upon sigma 1 square s2 square so if i take this ratio multiply by this so if i take this as a ratio then this ratio follows f distribution okay so whenever you have a question related with sample variance ratio of sample variance always think of using f test okay so yeah i think this is the basic idea that initially one should know about the f distribution or the f test now let's see some examples so here is the first question so what is the question you want to find the f value such that area towards the right is 0 0.05 with 7 and 15 as a degrees of freedom so now we'll go to the table and the table you will see the top degrees of freedom they are for the numerator the extreme uh, left they are the degrees of freedom for the denominator and we want to look for 0 0.05 so okay so at the table you will see either 0 0.05 or 0 0.01 you look for 0 0.05 so let's try to see the table and get the answer for this. So here is the table for f distribution. So as you can see, as I said earlier, the numerator are the degrees of the, the top row are the degrees of freedom for the numerator and the extreme left they are the degrees of freedom for the denominator. I have used m and n. Valpol has used v1 and v2 as a notation. So doesn't matter. So this is the first you can see f 0 0.05. That means area towards the right is the how much 0 0.05 and these are all those f values for the respective degrees of freedom okay now if you go to the second page again the same thing some other values are given to you from here it is 10 to 120 earlier it was till 9 and when you go further next page here you will find for f 0 0.01 that means area towards the right is 0 0.01 so here numerator is 1 to 9 and denominator goes on and if you go to the second page, it starts from 10 onwards, 10, 12 and so on. So only for two alpha values, the F distribution tables are given. But as I said, using that theorem, you can get for two more F values for 0 0.99 and 0 0.95. Now for the first example, so we have to look for 7 and 15. So 7 is here, third last column. And uh, we have to look for 15. So 15th column is here and the 7 is here. So you can see that what is the answer? 2.71. If we take 2.71 as an f value, then your area towards the right will be 0 0.05. Now, here is another question. Now, here you want to find f 0.95. That means area towards the right is 0.95. But you will see in the table, either 0.05 and 0.01 is given. Then how will I find this? Now, here you will use the theorem. What theorem? That f of 1 minus alpha v1 v2 is nothing but 1 upon f alpha v2 v1 so what alpha you will take so you take alpha to be 0 0.05 so f of 0 0.95 of 1924 is actually equal to 1 upon f 0 0.05 2419 so in the table which table you will look for you will look for f 0 0.05 in that go for 24 and 19 degrees of freedom take the reciprocal you get the answer okay so in indirectly though the table is given for two alpha values 0 0.05 and 0 0.01 using this you can also get the answer for 0 0.95 and 0 0.99 because of this nice relation so i hope this is clear now let's go for another example so here is a question for you so you are having uh, sample variances s1 square and s2 square and they are taken as an from an independent random samples first sample size is 8 second sample size is 12 and it, it is given that the population variances are equal okay you want to find the probability that s1 square upon s2 square is at most 4.89 so ratio of sample f distribution or the f test so what was the last theorem we saw f if i multiply my s1 square upon s2 square by sigma 2 square upon sigma 1 square then it follows f distribution so finding probability of this is same as you multiply by sigma 2 square upon sigma 1 square both side sigma 2 square upon sigma 1 square 4.89 okay so this is what probably but this is nothing but my f variable okay this is f less than but these two are equal it is given to me so finding 
this is same as you have to find the probability for f less than 4.89 so now let's go to the table and try to find what is the answer for this. Now before going for the table, what degrees of freedom we will look for? N1 minus 1, N2 minus 1. So we will look for 7 and 11 degrees of freedom. So 7 at the top and 11 on the extreme left. Okay, 7 and 11. And we have to look where is 4.89. Now you have only tables for two alpha values, 0 0.05 and 0 0.01. So you try to see where is 4.89. Now we will see that 4.89 will come for 0 0.01. Okay, so and that is towards the right. So this is one minus probability of f greater than 4.89. One minus. We will see that I will show you in the table that this will for 0 0.01 alpha, and therefore the answer is 0 0.99. So here is a table for you. Now here you have to look for 4.89. Okay, so we start from here. So do we have 4.89? Here also no. There is no 4.89. Okay, let's go for the next page. 4.89. Do we have 4.89? If you go here, you can see 4.89. Okay, so yeah. So and what is alpha? You can see 0 0.01. So that that means for 7 and 11 degrees of freedom, if you take f value to be 4.89, your area towards the right will be 0 0.01, and therefore your area towards the left will be 0 0.99. So let's go for the last problem. So here also you have two samples, independent random samples. These are the sample variances. This is the sample size and those are the population variances. You want to find the probability that this ratio is at most 1.26. Again, the ratio of sample variances, think of F test. So this is same as probability of sigma 2 square S1 square upon sigma 1 square S2 square greater than sigma 2 square sigma 1 square 1.26. Right? What is this probability of F? greater than what is sigma 2 square 15 what is sigma 1 square 10 so 15 upon 10 is 1.5 so 1.5 into 1.26 you multiply this and what you get is probability of f greater than 1.89 so now we'll again go for the table what are the degrees of freedom degrees of freedom is n1 minus 1 and n2 minus 1 so 24 and 30 okay so in the table let's see so yeah here is a 24 for you and where is 30? 30 is here. 24 was here, this column. Okay. So if you see, do we have 1.89? Yes, we do have 1.89. So if you take F to be 1.89 for 24 and 30 degrees of freedom, your area towards the right will be 0 0.05. And that's what the answer is. So I hope both all the examples are clear and the concept is also clear. We will use more about this in coming lectures when we talk about estimation theory and the test of hypothesis. Meanwhile, if you have any doubt in this, you can ask me in the comment section. Thank you.